What's up guys, my name is Eric, welcome to Teach Go High Level, and today I'm talking about workflow triggers, or automation triggers. Doesn't really matter which way you slice it, there's still triggers that are gonna make your life super easy, and it's gonna make things in your business run way smoother. It's gonna help you be a better marketer, better business owner, it's just gonna like make your life easier. But, it takes some learning with this, it's okay, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I don't say that to intimidate you, I know you got this, you know you got this, otherwise you wouldn't be here learning, okay? so. Let's dive in. So when we go into our workflow list or our automations list, all right, we have different ways to look at it, but I'm going to go in here. At a glance, you can see if I have multiple automations, I can see their status. Are they published? Are they draft? But we're going to start building. So when you go up here, create workflow, go high level is really cool. They do give you what a couple of templates. They call them recipes. Let's just take a quick look at that here. You can import from other campaigns, you can start from scratch, but then they have some cool ones. I recommend you just kind of check them out, load them in your account, you can see how they're using things. The best thing with automations, it, you'll see someone do something one way, and then someone will build it another way, but somehow they accomplish the same thing. There's no right way to build an automation. The biggest thing is that you get the outcome that you're looking for, and that it works. It's totally fine. Today we're talking about triggers, so we're gonna go start from scratch and it's gonna open it up. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna name our automation. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna name it Test Automation Trigger. Got it. Now, blue box lit up save, automation and funnel building. I can't stress this enough. Save, 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 save. In fact, I hit save like clockwork. I make something, I hit save. I make something, I hit save because I've had my power go out on me. I've built massive automations, didn't hit save, refresh my screen, and then I went and cried in a puddle on the floor for like two hours. No, I'm just kidding, I didn't do that, it was only an hour. But it really sucks when you lose all that hard work. Lesson learned, learn from me, hit that save button as often as you can, okay? A Couple of things to just orient your attention to. I won't cover this in other videos, they're very simple. In your settings section, a couple of things here. These boxes allow re-entry. That means a contact can go into this automation more than one time. So if you only ever want someone to go through this one time, depending on what you're using it for, let's say it's for a special coupon offer or something like that, you select or deselect that. Allow multiple opportunities. This is a new feature. Sometimes you can have an automation where you want your contact to be in it multiple times at multiple stages. Say they've booked multiple appointments or something like that. Stop on response. Stop on response would be really cool if you were running a campaign where you were trying to get engagement from someone and they actually respond to you. If they respond, it's gonna kick them out of the automation. The rest are kind of logistical. Uh, you wanna align it with either your time zone or maybe the contacts time zone, depending on what you're sending out. Let's say you don't want something to go out in the middle of the night, you can specify specific days of the week and times that the automation can continue to run. So if you don't want someone to get a text message in the middle of the night after they opted in at 1 a.m., then you can set it to send the following morning at the next time. Sender details, email and phone number. This is really cool because instead of you having to put the email address and the phone number in each email action in the sequence, if it's all from you, you can put your information in here one time, leave that blank on the email and it will pull this in from right here. It's kind of cool. And then the last one, this is really simple. I always mark it as red because if you send an email out from an automation and you don't have this selected, it shows up in your conversations tab. So that's that. We hit save, everything save, 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 save. Now let's talk triggers, all right? A trigger is what starts somebody in the workflow or automation. This can be all sorts of things and we'll go through these, but fundamentally something has to happen for this to kick off. Now, it can be all sorts of things, but nobody will enter this automation unless this condition is true. Now, you can have multiple triggers. You could have a form on one site and a different form on another site, but if you want them to get the same email sequence, you would make two different triggers, all right? So here are some examples, all right? You click on add new trigger. We have all sorts here. So if something in the contact changed, if something, if they were moved to D&D, if they had a tag added to them, if there was a custom date, if a task was completed, like calling them back, web hooks, uh, call status, form submitted, survey submitted. I go on and on and on. And we're gonna cover all these in subsequent videos, but you can just see scrolling through here, 
these are all the different things that you can select that if this thing happens, please start this automation with this contact. It's really cool. Your possibilities, when I said that they're endless, they really are. Just with the amount of triggers that you have here, this is one of the great superpowers of Go High Level. Normally, you could get an automation software, but it was limited by what it had around it or what you could connect to it. But because you have a funnel builder, because you have a membership area, because you have all, and a phone system and all these different things, because they're all in one platform, it can use those as triggers and it's almost seamless. It's, it's crazy the things that you can do, okay? Let's use one as an example here because you can also qualify on the trigger within the trigger, only certain things, right? And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go with appointment. So there's two different appointment ones I can use. If the customer booked the appointment, like through a widget, that's a trigger. Also appointments in general, let's say you manually schedule an appointment on the calendar. I'm gonna use appointment status, okay? These filters will filter the trigger based on certain things that you say. So any calendar that exists, let's say you have 40 calendars. If somebody has a status of any kind on any calendar, so this is showed, no showed, canceled, confirmed, whatever, it's gonna trigger. So we need to nuance this data a little bit. So we're gonna say, okay, uh, they're in this calendar, uh, test calendar. So only this calendar now, we've narrowed it down to that. And we actually only want this to be for appointment status is showed. Now, a use case for this is like, if you wanted to send an auto follow-up after a meeting, so if you mark that appointment showed, it says like, hey, Jim, thanks for meeting with me today. It was incredibly valuable for you, I hope. Um, I'd love to continue to follow up with you. Just let me know if you need anything. And then you can start them in a sequence because the only way that they enter this automation, they were in that calendar, which they were true. And if they were marked as showed. Also, you could put, instead of showed, you could put uh, no showed, which is like, hey, Jim, saw that we missed our call. Um, not a big deal. Here's a link to reschedule. I can't wait to meet with you. Hopefully we can find a time that works better for you. Don't just throw a trigger in. Make sure you're looking at how can I get this data down so that when I run this automation, it works correctly for what I intended it for. Question I always like to ask is what is the outcome I'm looking for? Okay. Give you one more example here. So we're going to cancel here. We're going to go back to triggers. Another one that I like to use a lot is contact tag. So if someone buys something or they click a button in an email, like a trigger link that adds a tag, lots of options, okay? If any tag whatsoever right now is added, they're going in this automation. Probably not good, right? But if this tag was added or removed, you could say if a tag was removed, then it's gonna pull up all my tags that are available. So I'm gonna say, hey, approved is the tag, right? And you can add as many filters until you run out and then you can also use custom fields, which we cover in another video. A lot of people just put it in there and then they lose sight of what's actually happening on that, that trigger. You could have multiple forms and it just says form submitted, form submitted, form submitted, and that's messy data. I really recommend you take the time and you put in here, okay, contact tag approved. That way we know if I want to disqualify that later from coming into this automation, I don't have to click into each single one to do that. I can just go, oh, this one, boom, done, gone. Let's say I wanted to add another one, all right? Multiple ways to come in here. I could say, okay, another way that they could come in here is if a customer replied. All right, cool. We're gonna say, okay, maybe you use a certain phrase, an exact match. They have a tag, what their intent is, or if they replied to another workflow or how they replied. So we're gonna say, okay, they replied in SMS, cool, and contains phrase, sure. That's also gonna trigger this workflow. Again, I did not name this, so I'm gonna be like, okay, sure. Again, keep your data clean. It makes your build so much easier later. So triggers, lots of fun, lots of ways you can nuance the data, lots of amazing things you can build. Just make sure, not only are you just putting a trigger in there to start the automation, that you're nuancing it and you're saying, only if these things are true, can you start this automation? And yes, that may require you to ultimately more automations than you want, 
but your results are way more fine-tuned and way more powerful because you can do all sorts of creative things with actions. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video where we go over actions in general. Again, pay attention, subscribe to the channel because we're going to be going through triggers and actions individually and talk about use cases for all these different ones. And when I see somebody build something cool, don't think I won't jump on here and show you how they did it. Again, my name's Eric. This is Teach Go High Level, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.